Okay, we are live this morning. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Stock Markets with Bruce. I'm your buddy, Uncle Bruce. I'm the only friend you got. No one else wants to be your friend. Tell I trust trust me on this one. They don't want to be your friend. They want to be your advisor. <laughs> Uh, how you doing, everybody? Uh, nice to see you here this morning. It is a Monday, March the 20th, 2023. And they want to be your friend when you're making a lot of money. They just want to be an advisor when you're not doing too well because, hey, I told you what I thought you should do and you didn't do that. And so too bad you didn't make any money. Uh, welcome to the party, pal. What a day we're going to have today. Uh, it looks really great. It looks really calm and surreal uh, the lake water is the, the lake level is flat and you can see the reflection of the mountains off in the distance get the camera out this is a beautiful looking picture we got here the the dow's up 19 points great s p is up 1.75 the nasdaq's up 3.75 points all is well all is well oil down 72 cents just over 66 bucks a barrel. I mean, hey, it's all coming our way. Gasoline is going to be cheaper. Prices are going to go lower. Inflation is not such a big deal anymore. What are we worried about? There's nothing to see here. Oh, what? what's that? Uh, the blood on the, all the blood on the sidewalk outside the house over there? Oh, that's just, that, that's nothing. That's nothing. You don't have to worry about that. No. <laughs> what? what? Uh, there were 15 ambulances here overnight, and um, and uh, there were body bags everywhere. Oh, that's just that's just that's just uh, you know a little a little thing happened. It's all it's all gone now. It's all fine. It's it it's not a problem. We don't we what? Um, no one wants to come into the community anymore. <laughs> people are leaving town. Well, you know, people people come and go. You know. <laughs> Changing times. Um, yes, uh, the bodies are piling up uh, in the banking sector of all places. How can there be problems at banks when there are $10 trillion of bonds held by the Federal Reserve just of the United States of America? How can there be a problem if there's a, a trillion held by the Bank of Canada, probably three to five trillion held by the Bank of England? 10 15 trillion held by the ecb i don't know how many trillions are held by now uh, uh, asia how could there be problems trillions of dollars of debt are held by the very entities that created the debt how can there be a problem i don't, I don't understand it i don't i don't understand how i don't understand how that anyone gets worried that uh the very people that uh lent money to gov governments uh are the very are the same people that manage how healthy they are i don't i don't understand i don't understand why everyone's all in the tizzy that bankers uh uh might be uh not disclosing all of the juicy little problems that they're sitting on maybe they're keeping that kind of quiet um why should you care i mean you know, if the banker doesn't feel you need to know maybe you don't need to know and you just go back to work and let your bank deposit check be deposited into your bank account <clears throat> pay the exorbitant fees to have a bank account <clears throat> give them interest on all the loans you have and just pay them back um if you just do that and keep quiet no one will get hurt anymore there won't be any more uh, blood in the streets and there won't be any more body bags Everything will be just fine. But it's when you guys ask too many questions about wondering just how bad off things really are. That's that's we don't like stuff like that. We that that's when uh, you know when people start to worry about bank number sixteen might be you know financially not so solid, and, and bank number twenty two and UBS or sorry, Credit Suisse bank number two in Switzerland maybe not to be on such good footing. Y you get changes uh, and. Um, Funny enough, uh, a funny little thing did happen over the weekend. I guess there was a uh, there was a three point two billion dollar deal for one bank to take over another bank, and uh, apparently, uh, all the banking rules that were in in place regarding the uh, 
the acquisition of one institution by another institution or minority ownership to majority ownership, all those rules were waived. Somehow there's a magic hand that just said, oh, we'll waive those rules. And uh, the buyer found $3.2 billion just like that to buy another entity that was worth $8 billion on Friday night. Uh, they were worth $8 billion in the market, but with a little bit of a waving of the hand, um, this buyer got to buy that entity for $3.2 billion. They got a 60% off sale, buy it now. And so now uh, UBS owns Credit Suisse and UBS uh, is now uh, about to find out uh, in the subsequent number of days and weeks what actually they got <laughs> because the government said we'll take care of you we'll cover you know certain shortfalls and we'll find a way to smooth this over for you but let's get this uh, troubled troubled asset bank off the market and uh, we won't have any more prying eyes from the outside looking into Credit Suisse anymore because Credit Suisse is no longer an entity that can be pried into. It's no longer its own standing entity. It's now part of UBS. Uh, UBS uh, has the backing of the Swiss government and so a lot of regulators around the world are going, oh, this is great, oh, this is great. Uh, yeah, the headlines are fantastic. Uh, the Federal Reserve is happy in the US, the Bank of Canada is happy, the Bank of England is happy, the ECB is happy. Everybody's happy at the regular regulator level. The, the, those big, those big fancy, you know, big top people. Um, you and I, we honestly do not know what the hell's going on. <laughs> That's really the truth of the matter. And the reason we don't know what the hell is going on, and we're never going to know what really the hell is going on, is because. Um, for example, uh, if if you need to fly from London to Zurich uh, to you know go see your international banker, uh, you're going to fly on uh, British Airways or Air Swiss or or other carriers to get there. Um, um, the bankers that know all the answers and the regulators, they also will go from London to Zurich to to have meetings. Uh, but you're not going to bump into them at the airport. You're you're not going to be on the same flight as these guys. Why is that? They don't take flights on commercial airlines. They take private jets. They'll have their little discussions in a private, uh, you know, uh, Bombardier uh, uh, jet or uh, or, or a uh, Gulfstream uh, uh, jet. Uh, they'll have their little discussions in private on in the little cabin that holds twelve people. And uh, they'll they'll talk in whispered terms and tones, and by the time the plane lands, they walk off their planes with their attaché cases into their respective limos and go about their business. And you try to clear customs and find your bag at baggage claim and get a cab and, or an Uber and work your way to the Crown International Hotel while they hand out, they head over to their little villas. Um, you'll never know what the hell is going on because you're not in the party you're not invited to that party you're just paying towards it and the folks in government are saying we've got our top men on it our top men are looking after all of this problems uh you don't need to know who the top men are they're just the top men and they're taking they're taking care of now that could be some women I'm not trying to be sexist here uh but i am quoting a movie quote and they said, our top men are on it. They're, they're taking care of it. Um, and so we have nothing to worry about. We, we can just go about our business and we can go back to work and we can just get in our little cubicles and put our little headsets on and answer those phone calls from our customers or, or fill out those reports on our computers and just, just go back to work. Everything's fine. Okay. Except for those of you who are option writers, everything is just fine because those of you who are option writers, you, you have work to do. Um, you have money to make, a lot of money to make. Um, this, uh, this market is uh, just uh, uh, evolving into a money spilling machine. It's like, a, like an infinity pool. And uh, you have that long side of the pool where the water will spill over. If another person jumps into the pool, the water will spill over. And you'll just collect the water from the infinity pool. 
yeah, you're getting all of it. Um, the option market is just going to keep handing you money, 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 while very, very desperate investors are looking for the mother of all returns and are willing to gamble every dime they have into the options market looking for that one lottery ticket to make it work. I saw a video this week. I saw a video. It's been out a few months. And it talked about how a guy turned $250 into $20,000 in the option market. He's not a writer. Uh, he, he doesn't write options. That's not what he. That's not how he did it. No, 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 no. He 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 put put some dough into the um, option market, got lucky on an option, rolled it, and went for the big payoff. Got lucky on another big payoff, rolled it, and and just kept making money uh, and now wants to show you how easy it is to take $250 and turn it into 20 plus thousand dollars. Anyone can do it, he says, because if I can do it, he says, you can do it. Um, and uh, that is what keeps uh, uh, YouTube channels like that guy's channel and many hundreds of others going because there are the desperate investors out there desperately looking for that. $250, $500, $1,000 bet that will pay off 5 to 1, 10 to 1 or more. And they're out there. Oh, God, are they out there. And with what's happening in this market and this economy, uh, more layoffs are coming. Uh, more cutbacks are coming. Things seem to be slowing down in certain areas of the economy. And more and more folks are eager to play the option game by buying low and trying to sell high. And uh, But the problem is that they think they're buying low. They really do. They think they're buying an option at a super bargain price. <coughs> and uh, what they do find out in many cases is that they pay too much. Um, they bought an option they shouldn't have bought at all. Uh, they really shouldn't have gotten into this contract in any way, shape, or form. And uh, they really aren't going to make any money anyway. And many of them are going to be correct. They are going to be absolutely correct in buying an option on a stock that they believe is going to go up. And it does go up. It actually does go up in value. They were correct in their guess of the direction of the market. Unfortunately, they were wrong in their timing. They were wrong in the accelerated pace. They were wrong as to how much it would go up. And therefore, they lost everything because... You can be right and guess a stock is going to go up. You, you can be right that a stock is going to go way up, but you can be wrong that it happens the day after your option expires and you lose everything. And you can also be right that a stock is going to go up, but it doesn't go up enough. And what you paid to buy the option was so ridiculously too much, which my writers are very familiar with. They are the ones selling you this stuff. They're the ones selling options for four dollars a piece when they know they're worthless, and they're sitting back going, "I'll buy back for a buck and a half any old time. That'd be great." And that's what they end up doing. These folks who buy these contracts, they end up getting one hundred and fifty if they succumb to the notion that maybe they were wrong in this case. But there are so many option buyers out there who are very smart stock pickers, and they really do pick the right stocks. They just pick the wrong timing. And um, option writers don't have to worry about uh, timing as an enemy. Timing is an asset, is a good thing. As the clock winds down, so do option premiums. And viewers of this channel just, just take the money. Just sorry to say, but they're taking the money. Um, you know, I do these one-on-one -on -one sessions uh, all the time, and I, I, I do my do my classes and then I get emails from viewers about I'm, I'm in this position what do you think I should do about that what are your thoughts on this I do these shows live and uh, uh, I just I just keep getting the same kind of messages from my viewers on an ongoing basis it's pretty consistent they they stay they say stuff to me like um, I can't believe how much money I'm making doing this or um, am I doing this right? Uh, because why? Well, I sold 20 contracts for 350 a piece. It's 350 contract times 20. I brought in seven thousand dollars. I'm I'm turning this into plain English. You see, I'm a color commentator. Uh, I, I brought in seven thousand dollars selling these contracts for 350, 
and I bought them back for a dollar and and I paid two thousand dollars to buy them back and there's this five thousand dollars in my account is that mine uh, what do I do with it do I have to give it to somebody else no it's yours you, you get to keep the change um this game is called keeping the change uh and there's a lot of change to keep trillions of dollars a week in the options market uh we're about to find out probably in the next few weeks some of the um some of the uh desperado investments that have been made through credit suisse uh as ubs figures out just what they got uh as they bought credit suisse at 40 cents on the uh, 60 cents on the dollar 40 cents on the dollar pardon me they got it at 60 percent off they only put up 40 cents on the dollar they're going to find out what kind of crap they're really into now and they're going to find out who they're dealing with who their clients are who their new clients are they're going to find clients uh in at ubs that they wouldn't touch with a 10-foot cattle prod as um and through, through credit suisse's acquisition ubs is going to go we wouldn't we weren't dealing with those guys we we didn't want to deal with those guys and yet credit suisse did deal with those guys and now there are clients oh great uh, we gotta get rid of these guys um we gotta we gotta make it so uncomfortable that they go away um i can tell you there are clients of credit suisse that are horrified this morning going oh my god we now have to talk to ubs we don't talk to credit suisse anymore we can't i can't talk to my my my, my deep my, my old pal in geneva or my old pal in zurich my banking pal i can't talk to my banking pal at credit suisse anymore um i have a new banking pal uh, this is a guy that is over at ubs and uh, we talked to him two years ago, three years ago about a deal. And I didn't like this guy. He didn't like us. And now he's my account manager. Uh, this isn't going to this isn't going to go very well. I think we have to move our account somewhere else. The problem is if you have an account at Credit Suisse and now you're looking to go to another bank, the other bank is going, oh, great. We'd love to have your business. So where, where's your business being done at right now? Ah, uh, Credit Suisse. Oh, <laughs> do you want? You want all these files from Credit Suisse? You want these 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 deals? There's a whole lot of deals that are going to be liquidated now. A whole lot of arrangements that are going to be ended right now. And all of this is off the record. I I will say that you'll hear a little bit about it here and there, but I'll tell you, ninety five percent of the unwinding of that's going to take place in the next six months is going to be brutal ugly and we're only going to hear little snippets of information about this stuff because all of this is unregulated it's all in the derivatives market through london zurich paris frankfurt and we're not going to be privy to the gory details but i will say <clears throat> you will find uh probably an increase of listings of really fancy yachts for sale private jets are going to be up on the market for sale uh villas in the mediterranean and penthouses in, in in various cities around the world there are going to be some juicy assets for sale under duress uh coming up because um the financing that that these were involved with are no the financing is no longer valid it no longer exists and there are people being told to um, uh, bring in 50 million dollars in the next 90 days or we sell you out of everything and uh, uh there will be some uh, some well-to-do people uh, looking to offload assets uh, in as quiet and as uh, sophisticated a way as possible without indicating that we're being forced to sell this stuff um and uh, there are going to be some deals out there bargoons on some high-end stuff it should be a lot of fun christie's i think will be very busy with artwork uh jewelry watches uh, stuff like that um other banks will find that uh, cash is being transferred into their banks or assets are being transferred in a uh, safety deposit safety deposit box business is going to be very busy in switzerland in zurich as people visit their credit suisse branches take their stuff out of their their safety deposit boxes and walk it over to another bank in switzerland and deposit it into that one um numbered company going into this numbered company over here they're going to have multiple addresses and, oh there's going to be a lot of movement a ton um a lot of old banking relationships have just ended um unceremoniously ended and uh, now people have to scatter now <clears throat> there might be some good news uh some good news is that um, some of the best talent that credit suisse had because not everybody at credit suisse were, were bad people some pretty good people over there they're going to be scooped up by competitors uh there are going to be a number of uh, 
uh, people who are uh, you know at home this week and they're going to get texts or telephone calls and they're going to be approached by third parties like headhunters very high-end headhunters i'm not talking about the headhunter that goes after looks for receptionists and secretaries or or assistants we're, we're talking about ceo headhunters we're talking about directors uh, headhunters. we're talking high-end guys and girls who are very discreet and who will um, contact these people uh, far away from prying eyes and prying ears and have a chat with them about their futures. And uh, for some folks at Credit Suisse, they're going to have a very good future. They're going to be scooped up by competitors at unbelievable money that they never thought they were worth. And they're going to be uh, promoted and, and are going to move into wherever. And, and they may find that they stay in Zurich. They don't believe Zurich. They get to stay in Zurich or they're in Paris. They get to stay in Paris or they're asked, where would you like to live? Um, we know that you've been placed in, uh, <clears throat> you've been, you've been based in Singapore the last five years um and the person says, yeah but i've been trying to get out of here for two years and they won't transfer me and they say well where did you where what where did you want to go what did you want to do and they say well i wanted to go to frankfurt or my my, my wife's family and our family's all in europe we'd like to be back somewhere in europe to be close to our family same time zone would be nice uh kids getting put into schools uh, private schools in switzerland um and what is it you wanted to do? Oh, I wanted to manage this or work in this area or work in this area of finance. And um, and Anders says, just just give me a couple of give me a couple of days to make a few calls. And a few days later, I have four offers for you from four different outfits. Um, pick your city. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six. Which city of these interests you, or have you got us another selection? And next thing you know, this individual realizes, oh my God, I can move. And I can be placed where I want to be placed, and I can do what I want to be doing. I'm out of here. That's coming uh, that, for the good folks. It, it, it's coming. It might take a month, uh, six months, a year. Some people might have a one-year contract they have to fulfill. UBS might be coming to certain executives saying, "You got to sign this agreement. Uh, it's a it's a non-disclosure agreement, and you can't leave your job for a year. Or if you leave your job, <clears throat> you can't get another job with anybody else for a year." We'll make it worth your while. Here's a million bucks, and uh, here's a severance package. Uh, work for six months, take a year off, and then find another job, and we'll make it financially worth your while. That could be the opportunity of a lifetime for that individual and the family to go traveling for six months and uh, go see the world and de-stress, and who knows what they want to do. A lot of changes are coming, and a lot of revelations are coming to a lot of people. But I want to know, what don't I know? Um, what other financial institutions are on the same, are in the same glide path that are going to be taken over? Because we are hearing that certain banks are still not doing well on the open market. And I want to know what I don't know. Uh, how bad is it? And how bad is it going to be for certain entities out there uh, going forward? Now, that's what I'd like to know. I know that Goldman Sachs is up 246 this morning. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure <clears throat> Goldman is not one of the banks in trouble. I don't think uh, any of the other big U.S. banks are, are in trouble either. Uh, <clears throat> I think they're all fine. Um, <clears throat> a lot of boutique banks might be in trouble. Uh, a lot of banks who did a lot of business with Credit Suisse might be in trouble if they had a lot of arrangements with these guys. Because it's possible. It is possible that a, a number of smaller banks in, in a number of other countries were very heavily dependent on doing business with Credit Suisse, knowing that they were up against Barclays and, and UBS and 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 uh, you know all the other international bankers. They were up against all these guys, and that they were working with Credit Suisse's pals, uh, long relationships. After all, Credit Suisse is 100 was 167 years old, so they had a lot of relationships over a lot of generations. But there could be a number of, of small hedge funds and and um, uh, family trusts that that could be having difficulties uh going forward on the other hand uh to turn it all around it could well be that uh there are some hedge funds out there that are rather liquid and uh they did do business with with this credit suisse and they're being contacted right now by ubs's top top men to quote a phrase um to say We'd like to come and have a coffee with you and uh, let you know that uh, nothing 
nothing and absolutely nothing is going to change in your relationship with your banker because your banker at Credit Suisse has joined us at UBS and is in charge of your account. And uh, that individual is being given carte blanche to take care of you in any way necessary. And all of a sudden, uh, certain funds are going to go, oh, this is not so bad. This is pretty good. Uh, we've, we're now being looked after by an even larger financial institution that is on pretty solid financial footing, if I do say so myself, including the entire government of the Swiss uh, country of Switzerland. Uh, yeah, this, this is good. Um, the Swiss government is not interested in revealing everything to everybody about their Swiss banking rules or their Swiss banking clientele. That's not what's happening here. Um, the government of Switzerland did not encourage UBS to take over Credit Suisse and then spill the beans on everything Credit Suisse has ever done. That's not the objective. The UBS people are saying to the Swiss government, you want us to take them over? Take them over? This is how we'll do it, and we won't do it under any other circumstances because law in Switzerland is law that must be adhered to, and we're not interested in, in being um, the guys that will make Credit Suisse secrets public we're, we're not interested because that's going to cost us all our clients the government of switzerland knows that uh, they're very aware of that uh, whether they're in opposition or not is irrelevant there is one constant in switzerland and that is discretion above all else and looking after our clientele and keeping our international reputation intact and there you have it so if there's a ted cruz in switzerland or if there's a mark rubio in switzerland or if there's a Gates, whatever his name is in Switzerland, or if there's uh, Jim Jordan in Switzerland, if there are any of those kinds of guys in Switzerland, even those guys uh, all understand that uh, the one thing we have going for us in Switzerland is our discretion and secrecy, and we're not going to blow that. Behind closed doors, we can be goofballs and crazy and you know conspiracy theorists, but in public, uh, we're, we're, we're towing the company line because that is what pays bills around here keeps every relative we all know employed uh, going forward. Different in America, but the, it, it is what it is. I just wanted to kind of bring that up and let you understand that business will go on. Um, and there you have it. But what I'd like to know is what I don't know. And um, uh, Elizabeth Warren said something interesting this weekend. It was She was probably quoted on Friday about this, but it had been replayed again and again and again all weekend long, especially in the right-wing media they just highlighted this comment of hers and her comment was i think we might need an independent inquiry into our banking system <laughs> rather than have a, a, a republican-led committee or a democratic-led committee investigate the banking system and come up with their own political version of what they think is going on maybe we should have an independent group of people investigate our banking system and report to Congress, uh, you know, Senate and Congress, uh, the government, as to where it stands. Well, the banking business doesn't want that. Uh, they do not. They do not want any disclosures about backroom deals that are going on. Uh, there are a bag. You you think there's bag of snakes inside Swiss the Credit Suisse's little portfolio? Uh, you don't want to know. Well, actually, we'd love to know, but they do not want us to know they the bankers do not want us the public to know just what kind of snakes are in the bags of all these bankers uh they just don't want to go there <laughs> um and so this is dead in the water because this requires republicans and democrats to see eye to eye on what these bankers and who what they do and who they support and how they support them the bankers have been very brilliant in how they fund and help fund super PACs super PACs for Democrats, super PACs for Republicans, and they've got them both right where they want them. And uh, there is no way in hell that a majority of any one party's uh, senators or congressmen are going to fall for this deal with the bankers controlling the purse strings on uh, funding for election cycles. And because America has this wonderful system, every 24 months you have to run for Congress. I mean, how ridiculous in this modern day and age every 24 months you have to win an election to keep your job uh it is the greatest make work project and the greatest way for influencers to influence politicians because they can't go very far they can't go hiding for three years and then come begging for money they can't do that 24 month cycle it's just gorgeous it's a wonderful thing senators have a six year cycle they got it better than the president they only get reelected every six years 
But in those six years, they have to raise 100 to $300 million to win their re-election campaign. So they're trying to raise $50 million a year, a million a week, just so you know. So senators need to raise a million dollars a week to keep their jobs. Uh, that's what they have to do. Um, presidents have to raise billions of dollars every uh, every quarter, every four years to keep their jobs, but only have to run once uh, to do it. Uh, yeah, it's fine. It's all it's all fine. There's nothing to see here. There's nothing to see here. The bankers are good guys, and they're working in our best interest. The fact that your debit card was uh, you used your debit card at the grocery store to buy five bucks worth of something and you only had four dollars in your account because your paycheck didn't clear in time and you were overdrafted on your account but you didn't find out until next week when you're looking at your bank charges and you were just well, i just got nailed forty dollars uh, why am i nailed forty dollars on my bank account well you were a dollar fifty under when you bought that thing of milk uh your paycheck hadn't cleared yet and so you're at fault forty dollars has been taken out of your paychecks deposit that just came in and now go and try and get it back good luck with that uh, how many how many americans have lost billions of dollars on banking fees that have been unfairly applied to them because of screw-ups and mashups and paperwork screw and everything else billions tens of billions and uh, those private jets uh, uh, that uh, these bankers get to use are very expensive and they're being funded all kinds of ways anyway that's just another story it's it's nothing important. Um, you look at the debt, look at the market now, and you're going, oh, this is going to be a fantastic day. We're up 126 points on the Dow Jones. There's no problem here. There's nothing wrong. Um, SP's up 14, NASDAQ's up 36. There's, there's no problems here. Like I said, all that that that, that what, you know, that street cleaner over there, he's just he's just he's just washing the sidewalk. Okay, yeah, I was covered in blood and stuff. It's being washed up now. It's pretty. It's cleaner now. This patch of sidewalk is cleaner than the rest of the sidewalk on the other side of the street. I mean, yeah, really, uh, we we maintain the best of the best here. Uh, all the body bags have been removed. There's nothing to see here. Everything's fine. The tow trucks are coming later today to take away cars that have been left behind by people who don't drive them anymore. We'll, 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 that'll all be looked after. It, in 24 hours, you won't even know anything happened. You won't even know there was an there was an incident over the weekend. You won't even know anything about it. It's all going to be fine. the The Credit Suisse name is now going to be not mentioned anymore, and so we don't have that problem anymore. That problem is gone now. We have our top men on it. The top men, they're on it. Top men. Don't ask who they are. You don't need to know who they are. They're the top men. They're the top men. Okay. Check out the end of uh, of. Uh, the first Indiana Jones movies, and, and you'll understand that the top men took care of the of the thing, the thingy that he was looking for. It's top men, that's why. Okay, um, option writers getting rich this week. Uh, that's all there is to it. ATIP, uh, what the hey, uh, who, what, what's going on with ATIP? Um, I was sent a, uh, I was sent a. Um, uh, uh, email uh, late uh, in the uh, in the well not late but in the afternoon Friday time Friday my time and um, and it had in there a copy of a um, of a uh, filing for ATIP that they made with the SEC. Now I was looking at the ATIP um, uh, filings and I noticed that uh, they had done a filing on Thursday when they released their um, uh, they released their uh, their financials, their fourth quarter financials, year-end financials. We we talked about that on Thursday, Friday. We talked about that on Friday morning. Uh, but Friday night they did another filing, and uh, this is the this is what's called the other shoe is dropping now. Um, so so Thursday they they talked about their sales and revenues, losses, profits, hiring people, how many centers they have, all, all the business stuff. Friday, they filed a new financing um, update. And this thing is, what, 100-something pages long. And, oh, it's t tedious to go through. But as far as I can understand it, uh, the number one shareholder of ATIP is a, uh, is a, uh, a hedge fund out of, uh, out of Boston. They're the number one uh, owner of, uh, 
of the stock. Uh, they own, um, uh, they were uh, deeply involved in the creation of the company, uh, the public company in the first place. Um, I'm just popping up everything here. Just let me give you a quick peek here. Um, Advent International Corporation, Advent. Um, Advent is based in Boston, and uh, they own 115.8 million shares of, of ATIP. Uh, basically, that's how much they've got. And um, um, it's about 55% of all the stock, I think, is what I what I had read about it. There's there's 207 million in existence, and, and they have 115 million uh, shares. And then they own stock through other... Um, um, entities, uh, other other uh, uh, corporations uh, uh, as well. Anyway, the other thing about these guys is that Advent, not only do they own 55, 56% of the company stock, uh, <clears throat> and, and maybe, maybe it's 80%, I don't know, but they are also the banker for uh, the company. Uh, the, the, the company has a series of loans, outstanding covenants and agreements that Advent has backed up. And so when people ask me, do you think ATIP is going to go bankrupt? I say, no, no. Why is that? Why, why, Bruce? Why? Because the company that owns the company also is the banker to the company. And so um, they're, not going to, they're not going to put them under. Uh, they're just going to uh, rejigger the books, rejigger the arrangement, so that interest that the company can pay will be paid to them. They'll get paid first. And, They'll keep the thing going. They have 5,600 employees, the ATIP, by the way, 5,600 employees. Government contracts like crazy, uh, contracts with uh, Medicare, Medicaid, juicy things to have, and uh, they're not going anywhere. Um, but what they did do, I guess, is they've arranged that the company, ATIP, can now get their hands on another $25 million in cash, and it sounds to me like that's every quarter. So if the company needs 25 million, up to 25 million every three months, they can get access to it through Advent because Advent is the, the banker too. Through, again, a gazillion Cayman-based holding companies. This is very complicated. I don't know if Credit Suisse is involved in this deal. Uh, probably not. Um, but what happened was the shares on, on Friday with about 15 minutes left to go, they were trading around 30 cents a share. They were 27 cents on Thursday. Remember that? 26, 27, 28 cents Thursday, Friday. Uh, they closed at 40 cents. They closed at 40 cents on, on Friday night. And uh, uh, they're trading right now in the pre-market at 35.5. But you can ignore this price because uh, this is pre-market trading and nothing is accurate in the pre-market. So we really you know, can't really put our finger on it. But um, I just got the impression that um, what they did is they raised the interest rate on the $100 million line of credit they already have. And they're just going to pay more in interest because rate, rates have gone up. And they're now getting these advancements every 90 days or so. And, and they're making a best efforts basis to make it all work out. Uh, there was some very, as, as typical, it's very typical in these, fi these filings. They're almost impossible to discern because they're so complicated. They're written by lawyers four lawyers, to the lawyers everywhere. <laughs> and those of us who are not lawyers and just can't handle reading more than 15 seconds of this gobbledygook, just, we just give up and we just stop reading. I took an hour uh, yesterday and I just kind of went through it and went through it. I reread it again. I found another paragraph, went back and I reread it again. And I just got that impression. Uh, What's going to happen with the shares today? Uh, I don't quite know because there was no uh, there was no um, official um, discussion of what's going to happen on the New York Stock Exchange. The the stock has to break a dollar a share. It has to get over a dollar a share to not be on the so-called delisting list. Because if they don't get the stock over a buck, it goes to the pink sheets, which is uh, an exchange. It's it's a place where the shares can trade, but then it gets harder to find, sell it, and it's not as a, a, not as easily found and I, I, all kinds of problems. So I think, I really believe that the folks at Advent are uh, motivated that the shares break a dollar a share uh, because they own most of them. Um, and it keeps the stock on the New York Stock Exchange and it just makes life a lot simpler. Um, but again, I, I, I don't know how they're going to do that. Uh, there are ways to do it. 
uh, many ways to do it. One, just Advent could just try and buy 5 million shares on the open market. And they'd run it to two bucks a share. But will it stay there? That's the next question. Um, friends of Advent could come in and, and buy in or uh, a third party could come in. But, but there is no need, there's no incentive for a third party to come in and buy up all the ATIP stock. Because if a Ryan Cohen came in and said, oh, I'm going to buy up all this stuff. It's really super cheap. I'm going to buy this company. I'm going to take him over. I'm going to dominate the board of directors. You're not going anywhere. You're not getting anywhere because 56% of the stock is held by one group already. So you got to take them out. And, and then you take them over and then you take over the loans. And then you've got control of this company. Is that what you want? Does, does someone out there want this ATIP like that? I, I don't think so. So what Advent could do is they could just propose uh, through the directors now that the annual thing is over and all that, they could now have a, uh, a proposal for their annual meeting coming up to add a, a vote that would call for a 10 for one stock split or 20 to one or 50 to one or 100 to one or whatever ratio they want for themselves. Remember, if you own 115 million shares, and you vote a 10 for one stock split, you're gonna go down to 11,500,000 shares. Just like everyone else only have one tenth of the shares. But in theory, the stock could be three to four dollars on the open market, because uh, it's a 10 for one split. But will it stay there? That's the next question. What I was wondering on Friday was, uh, uh, is it possible that uh, there are some hedge funds out there in the last six months, uh, eight months, a year, who have really delighted in shorting ATIP stock. And they started shorting it at, at, at five bucks a share, six bucks a share, four, and then to three, and then to two. And they are, they're keeping it down here in the 30 cent range um, because the shorter's game plan is simple, I think is simple. Um, if you've shorted, say, 10 million shares of this company, um, and you can keep the stock under a dollar a share and therefore put it in, in default of New York listing requirements. And ultimately, the possibility is that the shares could go pink sheet. In other words, it could be kicked off the New York exchange and be put onto the over-the-counter market. Then they, as shorters, uh, would be the white knight to, to offer to pay the to buy the stock at a dime or a nickel and just, you know, literally nothing and pocket all the money. The problem could be, though, that Friday night, the shorters realized, oh, oh, Advent has been awakened. Uh, the, the, the monster has been nudged and going, hey, you have to do something. And Advent is sitting there going, well, what can we do that will be uh, the least we can do to get things going? What, what can we do that requires the least amount of money on our part and we don't have to do a lot about it? What could we do to kind of get the market speculating that something big's going to happen without having to do anything? Well, why don't we just re-announce or rejigger the loan we have with these guys? Because after all, we, we we gave them a line of credit for X amount of money at whatever interest rate it was a year or two ago. Those are cheap rates. Rates have gone up. Why don't we redo the loan to get a lot more interest on our money? And uh, we'll do a 25 cent conversion deal for the for the debt with the stock and whatever and 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 uh, we'll do that and that and that will create a bit of buzz well what it, what they're after is they're trying to create panic among the short sellers is what they're trying to do they're trying to they're trying to say to the short sellers don't mess with us because we have hundreds of billions of dollars under admin uh, with with hundreds of companies that we have funded with money and we could at any time uh just put in a takeover offer for the other 45% of the stock we don't have by just making a tender offer for a buck 50 a share and get it all or two bucks a share or three bucks a share. We'll just buy it all and just take it over. Um, and that would of course screw up the, the short sellers because all of a sudden the short sellers would see the stock trading at three, $4 a share and they can't get it. I mean, they, they, they try to get it, but they'd run it up. I mean, so it's possible late Friday, some of the short sellers tried to buy back their stock and uh, they ran 40 cents in the last minute of the day on Friday on no volume because who wants to sell at 40 cents? Who wants to sell at 35? How many of you would make 10 times your money if you got 48 cents for your stock? None of you would make 10 times your money at all. So 
there's no incentive for you to want to sell the stock at 38 cents or 37 cents or 43 cents a share. There's no incentive to want to do that. Shares go to a buck, buck, $52. There's a few viewers of this channel who'd be very motivated to sell some of their ATIP at a buck and a half to two bucks a share. Oh, yes. And of course, if the shares were to go to $2 a share, I have a suspicion a high number of my viewers will write call options against their ATIP with a 250 buyout price good till January 2025. Uh, they'll take the biggest premium they get their hands on uh, and more than happy to offer their stock for 250 and taking 40 50 cents up front in cash oh yes there will be a lot of my viewers who will do that um so let's see what happens now so something's going on i, I can figure this way i figured this way there's a hundred million reasons why advent uh wants this to work as far as their loan is concerned and there's 115 million additional reasons why they want the stock to do well uh because that's how many shares they have um at, at a minimum and so there are hundreds of millions of reasons why Advent would really like to see um, the folks at ATIP um, uh, have it work out for ATIP. There's hundreds of millions of reasons for this. Um, right now, the stock is 30 to 40 cents a share. It's pre market. We open in 13 minutes. We'll figure out in the next little while just what's going on. Um, to give you an idea of who owns what, this is this is weird uh but uh but um, uh there's there's something called gpe7 uh there's something called gpe7 gp limited partnership there's something called advent international gpe7 limited partnership advent international gpe7 dash b limited partnership advent international gpe7 dash c limited partnership dash d dot dash f dash g um uh it goes on and on and on and on and there are millions and millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of shares all over the place there are partnerships out there uh in the cayman islands uh, there's there's stuff in luxembourg there's stuff in delaware there's stuff there's all kinds of stuff going on here it's uh it's um, very complicated very uh in-depth um, but at the end of the day, the amount of legals that have been paid, just the legal fees alone to make all this structure properly structured, <laughs> these guys need a buck a share to make it worth their while. Uh, they need it. They need it at five bucks a share to really make it worth their while. And they would really like to see it go to 10 bucks a share and then raise more capital to get off the hook on what they what they've lent to these guys um they've got to build this business and this business has 56 or 5900 employees it's not um, a little mom and pop corner store with one little physiotherapy center no it's 920 something of them um and they're going to build more um they're going to be larger it's just a question of um where and how fast and how much capital goes in to build it and i'm just getting the impression that if they add another hundred centers uh, with enough staff to handle those centers, they will have enough gross cash flow coming in to pretty well break even, maybe make money. Maybe that's their mentality. That's their thinking. I'm not guaranteeing their thinking is correct, but it could be their thinking that we're this close. We're so close to growing this company a little larger that it now starts to make money. And maybe they feel that uh, between insurance payouts uh, uh, Medicare, Medicaid, and, and, and their own ability to raise cash and charge for services, they feel that they can uh, grow the cash flow of this business quite dramatically. Maybe they feel, maybe Advent feels, that we could take over that company and that company and that company and fold them all into ATIP and make it one big, much larger outfit with 4,000 locations for physiotherapy uh, recovery maybe that's what we're going to become in the next five years these guys have got a time frame that you don't like probably um their time frame is long term our time frame is later today what's this thing doing is my watch working come on atip go to a buck now go to two bucks now go to five bucks now <clears throat> it, over at advent i think they're going chillax people uh we own it we run it we control it we bank it we, we, we own it in every single way and we'll deal with it. 
and that's all I've got. And that's all I can tell you. So let's see what's going on. Uh, we'll follow it as we go. Uh, what are we at now? Nine minutes until we open for the day uh, for Monday, March the 20th, 2023. Welcome to the Stock Markets in Plain English. I'm your buddy, Uncle Bruce. Um, I think I'm the only pal you have. Uh, there are no bankers that are your friends. Uh, I don't know if you know that, but I don't think you have friendly bankers. Uh, I think what you have right now are bankers who are doing this. Oh, hi, how are you? Oh, was there somebody back there? I thought I thought there was somebody that came into my office. Uh, there's a bunch of nervous bankers out there right now, really nervous bankers out there right now, because what they don't know is what you don't know, is what I don't know. They don't know what skeletons are in all the closets at their own bank. They, they, they don't know. And they think they're doing everything properly in their department and in their division, but they don't know what their bosses and bosses, bosses and bosses, bosses, bosses know that really is going on. And there are some nightmares, uh, skeletons that are so huge. Uh, they're so massive that no matter how much money these guys make for the bank, it won't be enough to save it. Um, there's that. And so we're getting a lot of uh, stuff to worry about. And look at the good old FRC. Um, uh, our friends over at uh, First Republic. Problems in uh, in uh, in uh, Happy Land. Uh, apparently, the stock is uh, even lower uh, today than it was on uh, on uh, on Friday. Uh, not 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 looking good. Uh, I'm trying to get my uh, my uh, quote to come up here, but you know it's not that easy. Uh, it closed at 2303 on Friday. It's 1908 right now. Uh, the shares were around 1617 earlier this morning um 9.8 million more traded um yeah we'll see what happens first republic stock tumbles after s p cuts credit rating again well <laughs> s p credit rating who trusts these guys uh hands up uh how many people trust the rating agencies to rate the banks a anyone and do you ever see the movie the big short do you trust moody's or Fitch or any of these guys are these are these outfits still in business um how how are they still in business uh who trusts any rating agency for any ratings of anything uh i i don't i don't know how that works um yeah it's uh, it's kind of um it's what what is it right now yeah it's yucky that's what it is it's kind of yucky out there uh hmm i i wonder just what 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 is that all about um yeah i don't know we're lower on that one. Um, what else is going on out there? Uh, just uh, there's just a lot of bankers in trouble. Um, uh, yeah, First Republic taking a beating. Yep, yep, yep. Bed Bath Beyond. Have you noticed Bed Bath and Beyond this morning? Uh, I noticed it at uh, I think it was eighty something cents. Uh, if I recall, it was eighty something uh, cents. Uh, uh, what's that what's the word for that oh yeah, yucky more more yucky yeah yeah that's what it was. i recall uh the stock was at 30 dollars a share um when uh when ryan cohen uh was involved with them and um and ryan had come in uh, mr cohen had come in with some ideas and uh they they the the the, the top management uh they didn't like the ideas uh they <laughs> the ideas had something to do along with um Something along the lines of, uh, here's an idea, he said. Um, I think all you guys who run Bed Bath & Beyond should take massive pay cuts and should take massive stock uh, 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 option cuts. And uh, uh, I think we should uh, replace a lot of the top management with much lower paid management. Um, we should do some house cleaning here. Uh, we should also uh, you know, negotiate deals with our creditors and and that kind of thing and and the, the 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 people who are running bbby who realized that the ideas that this guy had uh were going to take away their access to some really nice perks that they've gotten used to they rejected those ideas as unworkable <laughs> and they felt that the deep deep long loyal relationships they had in wall street would overcome any issues that this, this gentleman, so-called gentleman, was putting up. And they said, no, I, we don't think we're going to adapt, uh, adopt any of your ideas. 
And he said, oh, okay, you don't want to adapt any of my idea? That's okay, uh, adopt or adapt. I'll tell you what, I'll, um, I'll see you around. I'll leave it to you. Uh, I'm not going to cause any kerfuffle here. I'll just resign uh, from this company in any way I'm involved with, and I'll sell my stock, and you guys are on your own. And that was at 30 bucks a share, and he got out by the time it was 18, he was out. Um, how much would you like right now? Um, the stock's for sale today at the low, low price of 87 cents a share. How much Bed Bath & Beyond stock would you like to buy? Um, yeah, they're, they're now talking about doing a reverse stock split. Uh, how about that? Because, of course, uh, they're trying to maintain their listing on NASDAQ. And at 87 cents, you can't stay on NASDAQ very long. Um, congratulations, Bed Bath & Beyond Management. You've kept your jobs. You kept your perks. Uh, you, 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 you can keep working for the company. Uh, of course, uh, if any of you are thinking of leaving the firm um, and looking to join somebody else, you might want to delete your involvement in uh, Bed Bath & Beyond off your resume. Uh, yeah, um, so... Isn't that interesting? Uh, yes, people have walked out with Mr. Cohen on mass, and now this stock is a true penny stock. And they just did a financing what a month ago to stave off elimination for a little longer. And now they're eighty-seven cents. So, yeah, not uh, not too pretty. Um, there you go. Um, sometimes bitter medicine is what you have to take. Okay. Um, First Republic, eighteen sixty-five down four. 38 with two minutes to go before we open for trading. Thank you all for popping in here and, and saying hi to me and, and being here, listening to the old man rant again. Uh, it's nice to have you here. I think as option writers, you're going to do very well. I think the uh, the market is going to treat you very well. If you're writing options on Tesla, GameStop, uh, Apple, Cisco, uh, Pfizer, HBQ, uh, IBM, just, just rattle them off. Uh, I wouldn't fear the upside. Um, I don't think we're going to have a market that's going up 2,000 points this week. I, I don't um, don't see that coming. Uh, tomorrow and Wednesday, the Fed is meeting about interest rates. Uh, that should be fun. A uh, lot of excitement coming up uh, with that. Um, uh, it'll be interesting to see how Mr. Powell reacts publicly when he's asked by the press. Listen, uh, hey, uh, Mr. Mr. Powell, hey, nice to see you. Hey, everything great. Uh, a couple weeks ago, you were in front of Congress and the Senate, and you told them that everything was fine. Um, uh, uh, did you did you did you know about the bank issues at SVB uh, Silicon Valley? Did you know about the problems over Signature Bank? Did you know about the problem with Credit Suisse, or or were you holding that back? Um, in other words, were you lying then, or are you lying now about how it's going? <laughs> I mean, you know, you're supposed to be on top of this stuff. Uh, and why haven't you resigned yet? Uh, so this should be fun, interesting times. Uh, how much credibility this guy has left with his uh, board of directors, his governors? Um, I, I think they're scrambling like anybody else. Uh, they're 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 uh, figuring out that the Donald Trump uh, uh, banking relaxation rules that were passed in 2000 was it 18. Um, uh, all kinds of uh, regulations were eased up on for banks through the Congress and the Senate and the White House. Uh, all of that is coming back to bite everybody now. It, it only took five years. It, it, you know, everything was fine for four or five years. And now we have this. Um, and so, Mr. Powell, <laughs> how's it going? Uh, what's going on? Uh, we're going to find out later this week. Uh, Larry, thank you for ringing the bells. Appreciate it. Uh, Option writers are going to get richer this week, which means that we, we got the music going. We're going to be dancing. It's going to be, oh, it's just going to be great. Nice to see you all here. Um, um, welcome one and welcome all. Uh, uh, there you go. It's nothing to do with Donald Trump. Donald Trump did nothing wrong. Mr. Trump did nothing wrong. Everything's fine at Donnie's place. Uh, the big orange man. Everything's going to be great. Uh, uh, there's nothing to see here. There's, there's not a problem. No, every single the top men were brought in to help ed the administration under Donald Trump. Top men. Absolute, every single one of them, top men. And um, well, there was one person, was one female in the cabinet, wasn't there? At least one. Uh, two. Uh, I remember the education secretary and Chow, uh, the wife of uh, the speaker. Yeah, there were at least two women in the cabinet. Uh, 
But uh, that was the top men. They were great. Oh, boy, did they. Boy, did they put America on the right track. Oh, man, this world is so better off now. Just, oh, it's fantastic. Thank you so much for being an incredible president. Just, it's just been inspiring for the rest of the world to just watch the leadership that was exemplary shown for it. It was beautiful. Anyway, there you go. Welcome to the party, pals. Uh, here we are. Uh, what can I say? Uh, we're open. <laughs> oh, are we ever open? <laughs> yeah, we're open. All right. Um, we're going to watch and see how this market uh, handles itself. Um, we're up 123 points to start the day. So really, there's nothing to worry about. Uh, we're up seven on the S&P, although that pesky NASDAQ is down six points. That's kind of pesky. They're not, they don't want to join the party quite yet. Maybe they'll join the party later. <clears throat> uh, oil down 49 cents. Uh, okay, well, 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 we'll follow that too. And well, we'll see what happens. Uh, yeah, uh, this is uh, a most interesting, uh, going to be a most interesting day. Welcome all to the show. Um, thank you for the 139 uh, thumbs ups. Uh, it's great to have you here. Um, we're gonna we're gonna see just what what everything wants to do today. Um, should be just a sea of green, uh, nothing but green, uh, as we are going to see the world benefit from all those uh, phenomenal good things that the Trump administration did for four years. It's all going to be benefiting everybody. It's going to be great. Um, Rocket Lab, unfortunately, is off a nickel. Um, SoFi is up two cents. We'll take that uh, anytime. Uh, we're up to 549. Actually, we're up three cents on SoFi. Uh, GameStop down 12. Um, Tesla is down 97 cents to 179.18. Apple is up seven right now. Um, Unity Software down 15. HBQ up 21. ATIP is uh, 37 cents. I'm not sure if this is accurate. Let me see. Yep, yeah, 43,000 traded. I think it's accurate. Uh, 37 cents, down 3.6 cents at the moment. Uh, we'll watch that as the day goes by on good old ATIP. Uh, Google, 101.26, down 119. <clears throat> Moderna up 4. Cisco up 5. Pfizer down 3. IBM up 141. Microsoft down 370. Um, 23andMe down 7.5. Matterport uh, down a 5 cents. Sixterra down 6.5. Six Rocket Lab down a half a penny. Smart Red up, in a quarter, up a 2 and a quarter. Two and a half cents. Uh, Spire down one tenth of a penny. BBBY ninety four cents officially at the moment. Down nine cents at this moment in time. Ninety four cents on Bed Bath and Beyond. Amazon down buck fifty four. Home Depot down twenty four cents. Netflix down six fifty to two ninety six ninety three. Vanek semiconductors up fifty four cents. Adobe down one fifty three. Goldman up four fifty eight. That's a bank stock. Boeing up one sixty two. Meta up two forty. Um, the AMC Ape combination, uh, they're about they're up like a penny and a bit, or now down a half a penny maybe combined. Uh, Royal Caribbean sixty two fifteen up twenty seven cents. Um, Norwegian Cruise Lines with a new CEO coming in uh, this summer down twelve cents right now. J P Morgan another bank up one forty two. Costco up three sixty. Walmart up one fifty five. Disney up forty six cents. Nvidia. Down 253. American Airlines down a, is up a penny. 1399. So we got uh, the airline right now. Okay, we're up 207 on the Dow. This is a good start. Okay, um, up 200. Okay. Um, what about the rest of the market? Let's take a look here. Uh, how is this all working out? We've got we've got a S and P up seven, and Nasdaq's down 40. Uh, why is that? Uh, Nasdaq doesn't have any bank stocks. Why, why would it be down? It, if it doesn't have any bank stocks and the bank stocks are the problem, why is NASDAQ lower and the Dow and the S&P higher? Um, if you said Santiago wasn't to be touched, why did you have to evacuate him off the island? I always come back to that line. Uh, uh, I don't understand. I just don't get it. Uh, <laughs> You said he wasn't to be touched, and no one goes against your orders, Colonel Jessup. Um, and yet you were going to remove him from the island. Uh, why? Why was he in danger? If you said he wasn't to be touched, why are why are markets mixed when everything is fine? Why is that? Is why? What is it we don't know that we don't know? Um, I'd like to know what we don't know. Okay. Um, 
uh yeah Gaudi, bruce you know you realize uncle bruce that trump's isn't actually orange right it's just a fake spray tan he puts on his face every morning when he wakes up why does he do that the world ponders uh well see i you know <laughs> i i don't know i don't know i don't know mm, 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 mm. i i i can't say anyway the folks I, I don't know what I don't know. Um, and there's a lot that we don't yet know. And we're going to find out probably um, a lot. I think we're going to find out a lot of stuff that we don't know. And we might not like what we find out about what we don't know that we're going to know. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. Okay. Uh, first of all, welcome everybody to the show. That's number one. Number two. Thank you for thumbs ups. Number three, thank you for those of you who are subscribing to this channel. Number four, thank you to those of you who are members of this channel. And a thank you for those of you who are upgrading your membership to Gold Bagel level membership. Uh, thank you for those of you who have been here now for over two years. Oh my God, two years you've been here. Uh, those of you who have been uh, sending me notifications uh, through this chat bar, bar here, where you hit the dollar sign and then you can hit the um, how long you've been a member thing. Thank you for letting the world know how long you've been members of this channel. You guys are fantastic. Love you for this. Uh, thank you all. Uh, it's great that you're here. Uh, Home Skillet, thank you for thumbs up number 142. Uh, thank you. Uh, you guys who who give me the first, the fifth, the 18th, the, the 77th thumbs up, the 100 thumbs ups, the 120th, the 140th all the way through 200 every time this show comes on you guys get me the 200 thumbs up practically every single day thank you thank you thank you for helping us out it just uh, tells youtube that this channel has engagement and this is the kind of engagement youtube wants to have uh i thank you all uh it's fantastic uh wonderful stuff uh we're up 207 on the down okay that's that's good 0.65 of a percentage point we did lose 300 on Friday. That wasn't a 380. Uh, we did we did take a hit, right? Um, we're up eight on S and P, uh, unfortunately, and and we're down 41 on Nasdaq. We're, we're just not getting a unified. Yeah, let's take this baby to the moon, which tells me option writers are getting richer again. Um, GameStop down 27 cents to 1633. Financials come out tomorrow night. There ain't no run happening here, kids. I don't see it. Um, we're down 322 on First Republic Bank, 1981 a share. So far, 543 down three cents. Tesla down 281 to 177.32. Apple's positive up 23 cents. And Unity Software down 56 cents to 27.76. HPQ up three pennies, 28.07. ATIP at 35.7 cents, down 4.9 cents from that shockingly pop good pop late friday night to 40. uh but at 35.7 it's actually up a nickel if not eight cents from like thursday isn't it because uh, thursday it was sitting around that 27 cent mark and now it's 35.7 so actually it's not that bad if it hangs around here but i don't know what it's going to do it's trading 49,500 shares uh um are there shorters out there trying to cover their butts right now are there are there short sellers trying to buy this back between 30 and 40 and just be you know let's just get out of here let's just just <clears throat> let's just buy this stuff let's not let the world know we need to buy this stuff let's just buy it without telling anybody we need to buy it and if anybody wants to sell us a bunch of stuff let's we'll buy it and it's just i think the problem though for the short sellers on atip is over six months to eight months or nine months they have sold short millions of shares of ATIP. We've had 40,000 trade today, and it didn't go back to 27 cents. Um, hmm. Maybe there's a, a, a potential problem here. Um, the kind of problem that would take the stock to 80 cents a dollar uh, on a little run. Um, maybe that's the problem. I can't tell you if that's for sure the problem, but... Uh, the way this stock is not really getting hammered with hundreds of thousands of shares, it's like the shorters don't want to short anymore. You'd think that here they'd short more, 
to get it back to 27 because that's where they had it on Thursday. I don't know. I just, I just try to, I'm just trying to figure out what I don't. I'm just trying to understand what I know that I don't know because I don't know what I don't know. It's complicated. See, it's complicated. Do you do do you do do know what you did know though? See, it, there it used to be so much easier. That's exactly right. Um, remember the days you were 16, 15 years old. And uh, not, not maybe none of you, not not all of you had this life. I, I should correct myself. <clears throat> My life, uh, 14, 15, 16, I, I, I would come home after school. <clears throat> I'd open up the fridge and there'd be food there. There was always food. There was a magic fridge. There was always more food finding its way into the fridge. Maybe not every day, <clears throat> but during the week, food always ended up in there. <clears throat> and what I noticed that when it was dinner time, Dinner time was six o'clock. Six o'clock was dinner time, and uh, there were no calls between six and seven allowed in the house. Did you ever? Did you have those rules that during dinner time no phone calls were allowed from your friends to the house? And when the phone rang, everyone looked around and went, "Oh, oh!" And who would who would answer the phone? Dad would answer the phone. <laughs> you didn't? Did you want Dad answering the phone? You didn't want Dad answering the phone. You never wanted Dad answering his phone in his house we didn't want that no you wanted to answer the phone just in case it was a friend of yours who was an idiot that was calling you at 6 15 that shouldn't be calling but what was the most satisfying phone call that you would get uh, if you did manage to get to the phone before dad got the phone you say to dad dad i'll get the phone you just you just enjoy your dinner i'll take care of this and then you'd answer the phone and it would be a call for dad. Oh, those are the best phone calls. Uh, dad, the phone is for you. And of course, my snarky little sisters. There's no phone calls between six and seven, dad. Oh, I just love those. I didn't say that. I just said, go, oh, dad, I, I, I can't. I can't answer for those two children over there. Those are your daughters. I I just, here's your phone, dad. dad. You remember those days? Did, are any of you old enough for that? I don't know if you're old enough for that. I, I know. Anyway, um, Splair, he once mentioned that the lamps make a skin orange. And I know my energy friendly lamps are yellow instead of white. So I get a different skin color as, as well. Uh, Mirko, number 145. Some mystery should mean remain mysterious. Uh, FRC halted, says JR. Uh, it's halted, Bruce. Halted. Well, that could have been a while ago. We're at 2050. We're back. Um, deep value options. Uncle Bruce sees it all. ATP shorts are brain dead. There you go. Um, we'll find out. We're up 187 on the Dow, and we're at 35.7 on ATIP. Uh, 49,000 traded. That's all. Um, there you have it. Um, down 17 on GameStop. Uh, SoFi up two cents. Tesla down 247. And no calls between six and seven. Oh, I remember those rules. Cheers, everybody. It would be amazing, though, if my dad did pick up the phone at 6.15 and it would be a call for one of my sisters, he would be so polite. He would say, oh, I'm sorry that uh, it's dinner time right now and there are no calls uh, allowed between 6 and 7. Can can we have her call you after 7 o'clock? And these girlfriends would go, oh, I forgot. Oh, I'm so sorry, sir. I, well, I'll talk to her later. Thank you very much. And they'd all, it, the phone wouldn't ring between 6 and 7. <laughs> oh my 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 phone calls one line into the house only one line uh and then uh, after a while my dad had three well he had two teenagers and a young one coming up real quick poor dad my my father what a very tolerant man um of course he had enough phone calls during the day he didn't need any more in the evening <laughs> i don't know Anyway, what's going on? Uh, Tiff, hey, Bruce, uh, can you talk about the swap changes the national banks are doing and what that means for us? Swap. Um, I can't. I can't talk about swap changes because I am not an expert in swap changes. Um, uh, so, no, I, I can't. Um, if I if I knew it, I'd, I'd talk about it. But uh, I don't I don't talk about it. I can't talk about it. Ah, Splitter, you know that magic fridge is amazing. Um, you made you made me, by the way, while smoking, coughing, and laughing, very dangerous during your stories. 
E. The Magic Fritch. Drew, good morning, everybody. 162 thumbs ups for Uncle Bruce. Um, go GameStop. Let's turn green, says Flair. Zeta State. Wow, those green bars are bright. Tiff, um, okay, thanks, anyways. Uh, no problem, Tiff. Jen. You make people smirk, huh? Jen, Jen, can you talk to me about, uh, can you talk about the, the swap changes the national banks are doing and what that means for us? No. no, I can't. No, I can't. So, no, we, we, we're not going to do it. Yeah. Tiff, we're not doing it. We're not we're not going to take you down a highway that we don't even know what direction we're going. So, no, we're not. Uh, Cindy says the swaps are going to be daily. There you go. Tiff, I hope that helps. Uh, anyway, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm, I'm, I, I'm okay, but I don't know what I don't know. <laughs> and I'm afraid of what I don't know because I don't know what I don't That's know. That's right. And we have bank takeovers over the weekend, and we have, ignorance you know, ignorance is dangerous. Ignorance is dangerous, and we just don't know what we don't know. I I think I do know this. My option writers are going to get richer. That I think I know because um, we don't have to fear the upside here. Uh, That's right. And even if there is upside, we embrace it. Upside or downside. We 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 make money anyway. The market wants to go. Let the, time work yeah, let the time just expire these things out um viewers here on this channel are just getting richer um it might be a slow motion richer for some of you uh but at the end of the day it's undeniable you write options and you watch them go down and die and you keep the change and it is a wonderful wonderful thing and for those of you who are writing one option here and one option here two here three here it, it, it's a little bit of money it's, it's a few it's a few bucks but for those of you who've embraced option writing, who've really taken it close to heart, um, you folks are uh, in a different uh, world now. John, by the way, John Anderson says good morning, Jen. Good morning, Jen. Uh, yeah. Uh, good morning, Jen, even, from Larry. Even, good morning, Larry. Even for the people who are writing one or two or five, you know, maybe that means they don't have to have a part-time job. Maybe. Uh, JR says hi to Jen. Uh, Zeta State, uh, good morning, Auntie Jen. Dude, Uncle Bruce, do, you, you do you know what you do, you did know. Uh, dude dude has some fantastic uh, oh. insights. He, he says, he or, she, he or she says, Uncle Bruce, you do know what you did know, though, and you do know what you know now. There. You think you know what you know now. Well, there you, you think you did know what you knew. Uh, Nazareth, in other words, I, I can write 65 GameStop cover call contracts. Should I wait until after earnings tomorrow? What should I do? Uh, see, there's the question. 65 calls could be written. And and this is what's happened here Don't on this channel. Don't historically go up before earnings? <laughs> well, it's, see, that was then. Yeah. Let's see, uh, this is now. You see, GameStop has this nasty little habit of announcing their earnings usually on the day of the fed meeting yeah so <laughs> so, <nobody cares. laughs> so they're announcing their numbers tomorrow night after the bell yeah. tomorrow all day the fed is meeting uh gamestop will announce their numbers tuesday night wednesday morning uh everyone is on pins and needles about what the fed talked about tuesday and what the interest rate decision rate is going to be on Wednesday and that comes out noon. So GameStop gets a little bit of exposure Tuesday night and Wednesday morning pre-market and then everyone turns their attention over to the Fed and ignores whatever GameStop will say. And of course the phone call that that famous inspirational uh Tony Robbins inspired uh session they have with the are you laughing? She's no. she's chartling over there. That Tony Robbins inspired telephone session that just pumps the world up to no end, uh, just gets us all in a lather. Um, and then the shares don't do anything. And so here we are at $16.69. We're up nine cents now on GameStop. So here's the good news. We were at 1639 for the low, I think. Let me double check that. We were at 1625 for the low, and we're now at 1669. And so we're better, yeah. but we're not through anything phenomenal, are we? And so where was this recovery back to like 18 to 20 dollars? And then the financials start to come out, and we do yeah. what? 16 to 22? Where would we go? I, I so now Nazareth is saying. <laughs> Hey, uh, I can write 65 contracts. What do you think I should do? Well, I think 
if you're asking me what do I think you should I think you should write contracts right now as stocks up just not up by a lot but it's up a little bit 1673 maybe 1675 maybe it's a little better um put out a stink offer for some shares maybe offer 18 dollars contracts for three four months can you get your hands on three dollars a contract uh, is a contract trading at 260 65 that might pop to 299 or is there something trading at 280 that might go to 325 330 350 and you can get out at 339 can you write 65 at such a crazy price 1680 on the stock it's up again it's up 20 cents 1682 it's running it's oh yeah um can you possibly somehow um do that I, let's see what this run is all about um, see if there's anything to do it 500,000 traded I have to admit that um in 22 minutes this is more volume in the first 22 minutes than in a long time so that's that's good it's not like you know the most incredible opening of all time I mean no uh, this is 125,000 pre-split it's quiet but it's 1686 now could you write 18s could you write 19s for September or October could you could you would you did did you uh could you go with the 19 with go? Uh, with the, yeah like she says over there Nazareth uh watch those option chains keep an eye on this stock 1688 1688 it's the high today of 1688 1691 was the high trade already maybe just maybe possibly there's a 50 cent one dollar up pop in here coming your way and you can grab 18s or 19s or can you write 20s I don't know I, I don't know if you can write 20s for enough money but if you did write 20s and you took two two and a half is there something wrong with that no but what's right taking 350 is more right than taking 250. take the money a lot of the money off this table yeah take the money Arthur the money it's the money Arthur the money uh yes uh that's what we're we're watching good morning Jen from Splare TV um and uh uh let's see uh do, 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 do. what else is going on here um uh, uh, pulse guitar says uncle bruce i got a bonus now have a total of seven GameStop october uh 20s for 382 premium there you go. um uh just using premiums to buy more stock uh lots I, am i doing this right uh picking up stock writing more contracts picking up stock writing more contracts. yes Absolutely. yes 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 there is a there's a weapon now we're back to 1670 1666 on the stock after hitting 1691 we're going to get these waves now maybe that was the first buy wave of several buy waves cross your fingers let's hope so but maybe it was just a buy wave and now it's all over I don't know I, who I can can't who? who can say should Jen say <laughs> you want Jen to say it I don't I don't think you want to do that I do see the Dow uh up 338 points so there was a rush in the market that moved the markets uh SP up 15 but the Nasdaq still up 45. it's not going um uh I don't know I'm not sure what uh, what's going on here um is it good or is it not good oh, GameStop we'll see we'll see is it good is it real or is it Memorex is it memorized? remember that yeah. yeah we we had that skill testing question last week a couple <laughs> weeks ago who is that 1667 on GameStop uh <clears throat> First Republic Bank down 318 SoFi down one Tesla down 39 cents Apple down now 61 Unity Software down 24 um there you have it um JJ is saying uh, Norwegian Cruise Line 100 shares I just wrote July 12th for 229 uh and uh uh I'm going for I think I think there I think JJ is going on a getaway on the getaway mm -hmm. July 30th for a European cruise and I'm going to get my onboarding Ooh. credit yes you are you have 100 shares okay. of the stock you book a cruise you can get a $100 cabin credit just being shareholder um if you're going on a longer cruise more than seven days something like 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 eight to to, to, to 14 days you get like a 200 dollar cabin credit and if you go over 15 days you get a 250 dollar credit that's on all three major cruise lines Norwegian Carnival Royal Caribbean uh but you can write options on the stock too that's, that's true yeah yeah why not why not win, interesting win, win. Jen is smiling she, she loves this just loves seeing this stuff uh this is great 1664 up four cents on GameStop we're coming back 
Uh, but we're at 20 bucks on First Republic Bank, 2002, down $3. But the $20 print has been made. I, I don't know how good this is. The NASDAQ is worse. It's now down 51. Um, 16.64. I mean, we're just j jumping all just over jumping. the place. We're jumping. We're jumping and we're jumping. Today's a big day. Big day for you. Sir. I know. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah. All right. All right, Jim. Have a good one. Bye. See you a little later. All right. All right. Things are happening now. Maria says, uh, good morning, Auntie Jen. Uh, Zed, Uncle Bruce, just a uh, heads up. There are a few declaring the membership links with big green bars. Um, uh, was, oh, oh, thank you. Thank you. Let's take a look at that. Uh, let me take a look at that. Is that is that over here? Oh, yeah. Look at this. Oh, oh, oh look at that. Uh, thank you, Tiff, uh, for being there. Um, member for 16 months. Uh, Bruce, we talk about swap changes. We talked about that. Thank you, my friend. Uh, also, John Gill, I've been a member for 21 months. I'm a Gold Bagel member. Uh, JR, member for seven months, Gold Bagel. It's been a great seven months. Zeta State, a uh, member for 15 months, Gold Bagel level. It's been a great journey, 15 months. Mirko, I've been a member for 21 months, Gold Bagel level member. Um, BW, you've been a member for 24 months, Gold Bagel level member. Glad I, I happened to stumble upon your show two years ago although that my job is no longer there i'm building wealth with the tools and skills you have given me thank you bruce it's a kind kind comments uh computer whiz member for 24 months chilling with uncle bruce thank you guys for these uh, these notifications this is absolutely wonderful i so appreciate it thank you all uh for doing those i, I just love getting these i can't read them on my uh, regular street street steam yard uh, uh postings here they don't show up here. So thank you, Zed, for letting me in on that. Uh, that's great. Uh, Alex, good morning. Auntie Jen from England, home skillet. Um, would you recommend he sell all 65 covered contracts into one strike and in expiration? If he get his hands on three bucks, uh, three and a quarter, three and a half on 65 contracts, I take that money. That's 20 Gs, 20,000 American dollars. Put that in your account and fold your arms and be willing to give some of it back. Uh, that is the philosophy right there. If in a week, a month, six weeks, two months, you only give half of it back and you made 10 grand, uh, that's five grand a month. Uh, thank you. Uh, that's equal to 60,000 a year. Um, if you do it in two weeks uh, and you give, uh, you give, uh, you know, you, you keep eight grand in, in, in six weeks. Well, thank you as well. Uh, it's all good stuff, man. Um, take the money. Uh, Hawkeye, I uh, got a stink ask to hit for GameStop at 415 for Jan 1924. Oh, nice. Hawkeye, a good hit. Uh, Nick, Microsoft dropping hard this morning. Hawkeye happened during after hours and was only told at 638. Isn't that something? Well, we're showing a 345 gain on the Dow. So that, that's the best level of the day, 1% gain. Um, but, um, uh, mm, mm, uh, Saudis, the Qataris, the Norwegians all see big losses on the UBS deal for Credit Suisse because they were big shareholders of Credit Suisse. They all got, they're all getting wiped out to, uh, at least 60% losses from where they were. It's not, it's not good. Uh, S&P up 15.9, NASDAQ down 51, oil down 62 cents, uh, GameStop 1671 to 74. Seems to be the indicated price range. 1993 on First Republic Bank, we're down 310. SoFi down a penny. Tesla up one penny. Apple down 57. Um, Unity down 26 cents. HPQ up 20. ATIP 36 cents. Up uh, down 4.6, but it's back up to 36 on 69,500. Um, why isn't this stock back to 27 cents a share if it's so bad? Why isn't this stock at 25 cents a share if this is so bad? Why is it 36 cents? Uh, don't get fooled that it's down 4.6 cents from Friday's close. That close happened in the last five minutes of the day, Friday night. That 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 didn't count. That was all quick little manipulation when no one was looking. What is going on with ATIP? Because every day for the last two weeks, in the last two minutes, someone came in and sold the stock and dropped it and dropped it and dropped it. And dropped it and made it look awful made it look awful made it look awful until this friday night when it went popping up 10 cents a share 
Now it's at 36 cents and it's not giving back that 10 cents a share. What, 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 what don't I know? What is it that I don't know about this? I see something, but I don't know what it, I'm, I'm actually looking at. If, if, if uh, Santiago was not in danger and you said no one touches Santiago, Colonel Jessup, why were you going to remove him off the island? I thought you said he was safe. I don't understand. Okay, uh, just lo loving movies. I don't know. Um, Google down 88 cents. Uh, Moderna's up 580. Uh, Cisco's up 43. Pfizer's up 28. IBM is up 188. Microsoft is down 697, though. ME down 7. Matterport down 2.3. Sixtera down 6.5. Rocket Lab's up 2 cents. Smart Rent's up 3. Spire's up a penny. A mixed bag here. It's a mixed bag. Uh, huh interesting uh, what's going on uh goldman up eight bucks a uh, bank doing great um hmm yeah i i i i wonder jb morgan up 340 uh, that's a bank it's it's better that's why the dow's up uh, the dow's up on these big banks moving iron no doubt about that um you know what's it all about alfie uh you know there was a song what's it all about I, I, I don't know what it's all about. Uh, the top winners on the Dow Jones right now, uh, Caterpillar up 3%. Goldman Sachs up 2.7%. JP Morgan up 2.6%. Merck and Company up 2.5%. Travelers up 2.1%. Honeywell up 2%. Dow up 2.1%. Boeing up 2.09%. United Health up 1.8%. American Express is up 1.7%. These are all winners, losers today. There are three, Microsoft down 2.3%, Intel down 2%, uh, Salesforce down 0.45. Those are the losers. Uh, Apple's up 0.06% higher. It's, it's a nothing burger on Apple. Up a dime. Uh, Home Depot up 0.17, Coca-Cola 0.4, Johnson Johnson 0.59. But only three losers, 27 winners on the Dow so far. That's what I see there. I, 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 I wonder, I, I, I wonder, 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 wonder why, who, why are stocks up? I don't know. They're, 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 they seem to be higher. Um, the, the S and P, um, top performers on the S and P 500, uh, Zion's bank corp, fifth, third bank corp, U S bank corp. You, you sense a pattern there? Bank corp. 7.9%, 7.3%, 7% higher. Uh, Comerica, um, Truist Financial, I'm just reading off some of the key financials. Key Corp, Citizen Financial, Regents Financial, all up 5, 6, 7% each. Uh, bottom performers, First Republic Bank. Uh, come on, uh, come on. Uh, why are the banks the best performers and these guys are the worst performers? They just got $30 billion from the biggest bankers as a sign of we're backing you up. Why would this be lower? What, why, what don't we know? What don't, I don't understand this. Amazon is down 2.6, Microsoft down 2.2, Intel down 2%, Nvidia down one and a half percent. What's going on? Uh, just what What does it mean, everybody? What does it mean? I, I do knew. Um, over on, uh, on NASDAQ, we're now down 12 points. So NASDAQ is, is, is in better shape than it was like five minutes ago. The top performers are um, penny stocks, loyalty ventures, tempo automation, um, 24 cent stocks, 73 cents. They don't count. They don't, they don't count. Um, uh, I'd like to know the biggest banks, uh, the biggest cap stocks, how they're doing, but I'm not being shown that information. So I, I don't know what to make of that. Uh, this stuff uh it's goofy it's wild it's wacky it's goofy and it is what it is uh game stuff 1679 up 19 tesla's up two dollars now um first republic down three dollars and 11 cents so at 548 up two cents unity down 14 cents there's there it is game stop 1677 up 17 right now the the dow's up 368 and uh s p up 24 nasdaq down 10. what what don't we know uh, there you go. <clears throat> okay. Uh, is that a state? DQ, 24-month gold bagel. Yiddy up, baby. 
giddy up at DQ. There's DQ, 24 months of Gold Bagel member. Thank you all for being Gold Bagel members. Thank you for being regular, chilling with Uncle Bruce members of this channel. Uh, you guys are awesome. And uh, I, I thank you for, for just, you know, being part of this crazy group of characters that we are. Uh, we're just trying to make a living here in this crazy market. Uh, all I can say is neat, neat, neat. Uh, put the knee emojis out there from the Knights of Knee and uh, just let the chips fall where they may. Uh, let the shrubbery fall where the shrubbery falls and uh, don't mess with the Knights of Knee because this knee attack will make your market do whatever you want it to do. Yeah, stocks will go up, stocks will go down. Good stuff. Thank you all for being part of this show and channel today. Uh, this is wonderful. 176 thumbs ups. Oh my goodness. We're so close to a uh, to a 200-point uh, 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 move here on the uh, thumbs-up meter, meter. Thank you, everybody. I do appreciate it. It is uh, it is all good stuff. Thank you. Uh, JR, thanks. Spicy, thank you. Mirko, Richard, neat, neat, dude, neat, 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 neat. They're all coming in here with the knee emojis. Get out of the way. The knee emoji attack is on your way. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Uh, great to have you here. I seem to be frozen on one, one image. I don't know why, but I am. Uh, maybe I self-froze myself. I could have done that. I could have done that. I could have frozen myself up. I'm not sure. Uh, trying to reload my own show. Anyway, uh, thank you all. Um, Mirko, thank you. Uh, JR, Spicy, uh, thank you. Thank you. Maria, Home Skillet. Neat, 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 neat. There you go. We're up 330 uh, on the Dow, up 11 cents on GameStop. FRC, the First Republic, down 393 at 1910. SoFi up a penny, Tesla up two dollars, Apple up thirteen cents, Unity down thirty-two cents. Uh, sell my house fast number, Robert. One year, nine months, twenty-one days, one hour, thirty-seven minutes, twenty-eight seconds. Membership, fabulous, uh, approximately, give or take. Uh, Karen, neat, neat, neat. There you go, everybody. Thank you all. Thank you all very, very, very much. Uh, fabulous, just absolutely wonderful. Yeah, for some reason, I my computer shows my show frozen. Um, that, that's what it's showing. <clears throat> I can't figure it out. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm frozen or not. Hopefully, we're not frozen. Uh, Pulse Guitar, neat, neat. Flint Creek, neat, neat. Is that a state? Neat, neat. There you go, everybody. Thank you. I uh, hope I'm not frozen wherever you are and uh, you can see and hear and uh, watch me as we continue working away here on this uh, opening day of the week, uh, Monday, March the 20th, 2023. We're, we're watching all kinds of stuff going on here. Uh, just what is going to happen. We're going to find out soon enough. Um, thank you all for your uh, your tremendous support of this channel today. Mm, fantastic. All right. Uh, let's take a look over here. And let's take a look over there. Uh, see if I can get this to pop up properly. See if this shows. Where it goes, how it does, what it does, the way it does. Um, not sure. You are not frozen. Uh, thank you, everybody. You are not frozen. Thank you. Thank you. On my computer, I sure am. <laughs> YouTube is messing with me on my own computer, I guess, or it's just the internet uh, just acting up, and I have to uh, tolerate it. Um, but uh, thank you all for uh, for hanging out. Uh, we're up 300 on the Dow. A little pullback right now. Uh, 295 now. And uh, let's see. See if my biggest iPad wants to cooperate or not um, so far. It is uh, sort of cooperating. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we're up 298 on the Dow. That is cooperating. Uh, the rest of my systems are thinking about cooperating. They're, they're in, a, in, in a mood, you know. Uh, I might cooperate. Uh, with my own computer person, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, okay, uh, thank you, everybody. Spare. I was I was day trading all day with the best charts uh, that I, I ever could find. Then Nasdaq opened. Suddenly, the charts look completely different on eToro. Spare. I hate it when they update the brokers. Uh, there you go, my friend. I I, I don't know what to tell you. Where are we at now? We're up sixteen on GameStop. A three seventy loss on First Republic. SoFi down a penny. Tesla up two forty. Apple up seven. Unity down 49 cents. Um, and uh, let's see. Uh, da, da, 
Uh, here's a headline. I love this one. I feel like a sucker. Um, I feel like a sucker as the headline. Um, okay, we got uh, wild and wacky stuff happening on my uh, computer here right now. Just don't mind me. All right. Uh, it says here, I feel like a sucker. I bought stock for $18 after an IPO. Uh, the underwriter's brokerage house had a $30 price target on it. It fell below a dollar. How could they get it so wrong? <laughs> yeah. How could the broker with the firm that underwrote the stock get it so wrong? Uh, how, how, how is it that, uh, that um, you know, companies were funded at, at, at 5 and 10 and 15 and $20 privately by that brokerage company to their best institutional clients? Then uh, they did a roadshow to do an IPO, and they filed the IPO. And, and they, they, they decided they were going to bring the stock out at $40, and they ultimately brought it out at $55 um, because of the demand that had been created. Um, and then the stock opened for trading at $105, and within the next day it was at $175, and then the brokerage firm was coming up with a $250 price recommendation. Um, how is it that these stocks are back to $10 a share? How is that even possible? Oh, and by the way, <laughs> just, just uh, to kind of clarify, uh, w when the stock did get called for trading at $100 a share and it took the run up to $175, uh, the only sellers that could sell the stock were uh, entities that bought it at 5 and 10 and 15 and 20. Uh, they, could, they could sell some of those shares. And then all the people that bought the IPO at, at 54, they were allowed to flip their stock. And who were they? Uh, well, they were the best retail clients they had and some of their corporate clients and hedge funds and friends. friends, um, Perhaps some clients that they owed favors to because the last IPO didn't work out so much. So they put them into this IPO and this one paid them back for that one. And everyone is cool now. We're all good. And we'll see you in Monte Carlo at the uh, the Grand Prix, um, and you can we'll take a look at your private jet when we land in Nice, France, and you can take a look at my private jet and we'll compare notes. Uh, we've all we're all looked after now; it's all good. Um, but why is it that when it went up to that level, you recommended it to go way higher, and now a year or two later, it's down here? Um, how, how is that possible? I don't get it. I don't I don't deal with you guys very much, and I. My company doesn't deal with you guys anyway, so we don't make you any commissions. Uh, why is it that we're getting the short end of the stick when it comes to rec recommendations? And why don't you ever call me when you're doing private placements on companies you know are going to go public at double or triple the price that you're doing the fi the financing at? Why don't I ever get that stuff? I wonder. I wonder why is that? Yeah. Why don't you? Why? Why? Uh, yeah. Okay. That's so just went green. Says it. Says they. Uh, just, uh, just the spring freeze affecting the snow. Nothing to see here. All's well. Okay. Thank you, Bobby. <clears throat> There's nothing to see here. We're down. We're up 308 on the Dow. Uh, GameStop's up 26 cents to 1686 again. We're, we're, we're green. Uh, we're, we're pushing the high of the day on GameStop. Go GameStop. Um, um, First Republic down 350 though. SoFi up a penny. Tesla up 240. Apple up eight, down eight. And, and U Unity down 37, but okay uh that's what's happening we're up 39 on hbq and the atip what's with this atip it's 36.6 now it's up again um why is it higher uh it cut down to 35.7 it's now 36.6 on 92,000. why 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 is 32 why is 92,000 shares trading not making this go down 10 cents a share why is it now down only four when it was actually down more than what what don't what is it i don't know uh there's something happened on atip uh something something's going on um i can't i can't tell you what it is but uh, there's something going on this was 27 cents on thursday it was 27 cents on thursday friday uh it was 20 wasn't it was, wasn't it uh yeah it's now only down 3.9 cents it's just gone up another tenth of a penny what, 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 what's this all about? Um, 26.7 cents on March 15th at 1.45 in the afternoon uh, was 27 cents for hours on March 15th. 
five days ago. It was 27 cents five days ago. What 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 happened? Um, why are we at the highest level since approximately February the 23rd? In a month. This best level it's been at in a month. Uh, and I'll tell you something. If it breaks 48 cents, and it could do it, that would be the best level since January 25th, 2023, if it, if it breaks 48. Now, if it broke 117, that would be the highest level since November 1st, if it did that. Um, but if it broke 224, that would be the best level since June 2022. Um, of course, if it broke 10.02, uh, you know, that would be the best level since May of 2021. Um, and if it went to $20 a share, there would be a parade in my honor uh, because of how many people I may have encouraged to buy this stuff while it was way down here. But we'll worry about the parade route later. Uh, we'll write on a lot of options first, okay? Okay. 36.7 cents on ATIP on 92,620 shares. Um, no announcement. Uh, um, I, I don't. I don't know. Uh, um, headline: uh, uh, 64 cents US. Uh, that's what analysts think ATIP physical therapy is worth after its latest results. 64 cents. Well, I wouldn't mind if it went to 64 cents. Would you mind? I don't think we'd mind if it went to 64. That's a nice place to start. Um, so that would be okay. Um, well, okay. Um, huh. Um, interesting. Uh, I don't know. I, 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 I wonder, uh, Hmm. Article here. Uh, uh, it says here the the for example we noticed that ATIP physical therapy's rate of growth is expected to accelerate meaningfully, with revenues forecast to exhibit 8.3 percent growth in the end of 2023 on an annualized basis. It's well above its historical decline of 3.9 cents percent a year over year in the last three years. Um, interesting. ATIP is supposed to outgrow the competition in its business. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. We'll see how this all plays out. These are our opinions, of course, and they're, everyone's allowed to have an opinion. 36.7 cents, and it's supposed to be worth 64 cents. Go to 64, and let's deal with it when we get there. How about that? Uh, okay. The Dow is off 266 right now. Um, that's what I have right here. Uh, you know, Square said, if this thing breaks 53, I'm going to smile all weekend while hopefully being in the green uh, all this week. Well, we'll see here. Uh, 1680 on GameStop up 20. Okay, uh, we'll we'll take the gain. Uh, can we get more? I I don't I don't know. Um, uh, yeah, uh, let's see. Uh, S and P up only ten points, just not getting the bid that the Dow has, and the Nasdaq is back down again, fifty three again on the Nasdaq. I kind of wonder if this dead cat bounce is over for the markets. Uh, did we have a dead cat for the Dow and nobody else? And now the other two are just dragging the Dow lower, uh, just saying we're not going higher right now. Is that what is really happening here? Um, GameStop, 16.80, up 19 cents with earnings coming out tomorrow. We're going to have to figure this out. 5.44 on SoFi. We're flatlining here. Tesla up 250 at 182.63. It's hanging around. Um, Apple, 154.77, down 23 cents. Um Option writers are getting richer today. That's all I can figure here right now. Um, Splair is saying, look, uh, I, I got to go. So I'm wishing everybody a great, successful day and a great start to the week. Thank you, Splair. We'll see you tomorrow morning, my friend. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Uh, okay. What is going to happen with this market? Oh, my, 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 my. Um, I think option writers are going to make a lot of money. This is going to be a great spring and summer and fall. Um, earnings are going to come in weaker than expected. They're going to be down, down surprises, uh, negative surprises on earnings from 
many companies. That's what I think is going on. I uh, think interest rates are going to stay where they are or not, or higher. I think credit is going to get tighter, going to get harder to borrow. It's going to cost certain companies a lot more money for interest uh, in interest to roll over debt uh, because the credit markets are going to get tighter. You are a junk bond issuer. You're a company like a cruise line. You want to raise a billion dollars, you're going to be paying 12 to 14% interest for that money. So your old loan is maturing at 3.5%, and you're going to roll it into a new loan at 125 to 13.5%, 14%. That's what I think is coming up. And cruise line stocks are going to be under unbearable pressure to go lower because they cannot deliver the earnings with those earnings being evaporated into interest payments. The cruise lines will desperately try to tell you, we're making all this money. We're bringing in all this cash. The EBITDA, the earnings before income tax, before interest and taxes um, is great. Yeah, yeah. But you see, earnings per share, net, 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 and PE multiples are based on actual net profits when you can you factor in all your expenses. Can't be selective about some of them. And so the cruise lines are going to come out with negative numbers. And um, I don't know why these stocks are where they are. I, I really don't. There's that. Uh, boy, oh, oh boy. Um, and then there's our friends at Apple and our friends at, uh, at uh, Google and Amazon and, uh, and uh, Netflix. Uh, can they deliver um, the kind of returns that we've been used to them delivering? Can they, you know, it off cisco i uh, don't well, we'll see 50 dollars 47 cents of 28 cents today pfizer 40 31 40 41 it's actually over 40 again 31 cents ibm yeah they're doing okay 125 14 up 145 uh, microsoft down 770 interestingly um this artificial intelligence stuff uh this ai craze uh the latest thing to jump into i don't know how that makes companies money I don't I don't quite know how that's going to make companies money because everyone's going to have it. Everyone's going to have their own version of AI. It's an open playing field. Uh, it's not like Apple owns all of AI technology. I, I don't I don't know where that uh, takes earnings for people. I don't understand. Amazon down 286, Home Depot down 56 cents, Netflix down 49. Um, Adobe 358. Um, Goldman up seven dollars, a little snapback recovery after being down this morning. Uh, Goldman's range today 306 for the low, 312 for the high. Giddy up, Goldman. Uh, we will take the gain today. Got up to 312, now 310.70. It's all right, it's doing seems to be doing okay. Uh, Boeing up three bucks. Um, yeah, Facebook down 38 cents at 195. I don't know why it's here. I, I don't know why it's over 100 a share. Um, Meta is going to have issues. But uh, the market is ignoring these issues. They don't want to talk about it. They don't want to acknowledge issues at Meta. Okay, then continue on. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll see what gives. Uh, okay, uh, Target, 174 higher. Uh, that's a retailer trouble. Uh, JP Morgan, up 244. Okay, banker. Uh, Costco, up 30 cents, uh, still overpriced. Remember, Costco right now is trading at 35.8 times earnings. That's double what they should be. Um, unless they can double their earnings in the next year or two, this P multiple is overpriced. Walmart up a dollar at 140 bucks a share, trading at 32.9 times earnings. It's double what it should be. It, it, it should not be 33 times P E multiple. It shouldn't be trading here. There's no way. Uh, that's That stock should be 90, 95. Uh, it's just my humble opinion. Disney, $94 a share, up $0.99 cents at 51 times earnings. They're not going to have earnings of mega proportion going forward here. We have a slowdown coming. Yikes. Uh, I, I just, mm, look at that. American Airlines up $0.12, cents. Fourteen ten a share. Um, yeah, not, not, not great. No, not, not great. Okay. Um... We'll see how the rest of the economy does going forward here. The slowdown is expected in the U.S. economy. Uh, <clears throat> employment's good. Uh, if you want a job, apparently you can find one. Uh, but there are industries who cannot get qualified employees in 
into their job into their into their companies uh because the you know, applicants are woefully underqualified and the applicants that could do the job are not allowed into america under very restrictive immigration rules even for workers and so america is shortchanging itself at the moment but politically very difficult to just open the borders to a whole bunch of workers that want to come in you don't get reelected doing that in this environment not right now and that is america shooting itself in its foot and there it is and it's the same elsewhere america isn't the only one i'm not picking on america i just love america so much brian 191 thumbs ups thank you brian for coming through here um uh brian is saying i'm not sure if anyone told you this uncle bruce but your short video from friday was excellent uh what was that one about <laughs> Oh, how much profit to take? Uh, when when is the right time to take? Yes, yes, uh, that's right. Those of you who want to understand options and 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 what, when's the right time? What's the right number to take options and profits and stuff? How to figure it out and stuff? Yes, uh, thank you, Brian. I, I appreciate that. Um, more coming, more short videos coming your way. Um, anyway, there you go. Uh, Jr. My wife is is. Uh, my wife is have an AI app make a composite picture of her for her real estate business cards. Pretty cool stuff. She's so she got AI making. A, that's interesting. Not feeling so well this morning, so I'm returning to be to try and rest some more. Have a great day. Oh, JR. Oh, oh, oh you're in rough shape, buddy. Please take it easy. Uh, Bama, babe, I only see three stickers. I only three see three stickers. I don't even know what that means. Uh, what does... What does three stickers mean in the world of stickers? I don't, I don't understand what three stickers are in explanation, really. 195 thumbs ups. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, you guys are awesome, as always. It is so appreciated. Um, and uh, welcome all to the party. Uh, nice to have you through here. Um, and DQ, thank you for that uh, gold bagel member level neat emoji thingy and computer whiz member for 24 months thank you as well for posting these bw glad i happened to stumble upon you two years ago thank you guys for those uh, alerts on how long you've been members i thank you very very much very nice okay um uh, uh aj number 192 thank you uh uh Mm, mm, mm. Uh, obviously, I can't type this morning, says JR. I, I can't type. <laughs> Three member levels, but I'm a babe. Three member levels. Um, and again, now I only see three stickers, three member levels. Now, now I still don't know what you mean. Um, uh, Brian, uh, JR, you must be sick. We don't understand anything you're saying. Go get some sleep. <laughs> JR, smile. <laughs> I don't know Obama babe um help me I uh, help me out here I I'm um I don't understand um obviously I am clueless today maybe I'm like JR maybe I'm out of it too uh we're up 330 on on the Dow um I feel fine uh we're up 23 on S&P but the Nasdaq is down 8.2 and uh there there you go um okay um yeah opinion svb's collapse exposes the fed's massive failure to see the bank's warning signs you, you think that's a republican-led uh, opinion piece is that a hit piece from a super PAC or something someone sponsored by a super PAC? uh i don't know uh, here's another one opinion uh someone needs to tell jerome powell that this is not a kill at all costs mission cut interest rates now to prevent a full-blown banking crisis you think that's another sponsor uh, sponsored by a super PAC writer with an opinion that leans towards the Republican angle maybe is that you think maybe possibly could it be could that possibly be what's happening out there maybe mm, looks like a regular headline to me uh that that, that, that mm, I'm being I'm being sarcastic now aren't I guess I am did you say that Bruce what a guy um what can I say oil down a dollar seven a barrel, sixty-five dollars and sixty-seven cents for Texas crude. Sixty-five, sixty-seven. America has scored a touchdown, releasing its national reserve uh, oil, whatever it was, a quarter of it, 
20 percent of it was released i can't remember how much it was they're buying it back for way less than they sold it for well done and when they're finished buying guess what happens to oil then 50 to 55 a barrel is your next stop potentially 50 55 a barrel which puts gas at 180 to 280 a gallon across america yep thank you president biden a uh, nice job um orange boy couldn't do that although orange boy did have cheap prices because he allowed drilling everywhere and even though biden is restricting drilling in certain sensitive areas it's still dropping in price isn't that amazing uh, okay um anyway uh that are posted in the chat um uh, three member levels that are posted in the chat. Um, I, I still don't. Uh, I wish I knew what this meant. Uh, just it is so complicated to, in the future today. Um, so complicated. Thank you all for for posting in the chat. Uh, thank you all. Um, and it's all it's all. Uh, uh, obviously, uh, members of the channel, and I appreciate all you members who are here. Uh, thank you all uh, very much. All right. Um, okay. We're down. We're up 324 on the Dow. Back up again. GameStop is 1685, up 25 cents. The high today, $16.92 today. Uh, that was the high trade today, 16.92. Now it's 16.85. Um, First Republic, 1996, uh, down 308. Uh, SoFi, 550, up four cents. Uh, Tesla, 568 uh, on the upside, 185.82. Mm. Apple, up 30 cents. Y Unity, down 12. Uh, HPQ, up 49 today. ATIP, 36.8 cents a share. Um, 95,300 traded. That's what we got. Um, we did hit a high of. What was that? 38.6. Just a few minutes ago, we were at 38.6. That's interesting. Uh, we're getting some little movement now. Google down 95 cents. Uh, Moderna up 620. Cisco up 34. Pfizer up 31. IBM up 146. Uh, Microsoft still lower, 779 on the day at 271.64. That's what we have here, everybody. Thank you for joining us today um, and, and being around. It's just great to have you. ATIP coming back for 40 cents this morning. Uh, Nick, it's going to 40. Um, and uh, uh, here you go, home skillet. For anyone interested, Frontline has a new special called The Age of Easy Money on current economy and Fed policies since the 2008 crash. That, that should be a good show. Four of us have posted it. It's been over two years. Four of us have posted it. It's been over two years. JL, I only see one green level member. Um, you know, we have the chillin' members and we have the gold bagel level members. And we have a bunch of folks that are two years or approaching now two years of membership. I, I cannot thank you folks enough for this uh, fantastic loyalty to the channel. It is uh, very much appreciated. I do appreciate this. You guys are awesome stuff. ATIP, 36.8 cents last trade that I see, down 3.7 on 95,300 shares. Uh, interesting. We'll watch ATIP here. The Dow up 304, GameStop up 25 cents. Um, and there, there you have it, uh, everybody. Um, uh, manager, I am number 200 on your thumbs up meter, Bruce. You are going to get 200 thumbs up today, and you got it. How uh, about that? Drew, home skill. I started last night. It's fascinating. This show is fascinating. On Frontline, a new special called The Age of Easy Money. Uh, it's probably worth your while watching it. Probably very much worth your while to just help you <clears throat> comprehend a little more background as to what has been going on. And um, I'll watch it myself. There you go. Um, uh, Mirko, uh, they're talking about the green badges. Nothing to worry about. Brian, GameStop heading to 17. Well, 1692. Here it goes. Here comes GameStop running down the track, baby. Can't, ain't going back. Go, GameStop. Go. Go to 17. Go to 1725. Go to 1750. Go to $18. I don't mind. Our, my, my, my viewers don't mind. Option writers, they don't mind. It goes to 
nineteen dollars. Oh, we'll we'll do we'll do rollovers. Oh yeah, baby. We'll do GameStop rollover. Sixteen nine to six on the GameStop. Mm -mm -mm. It's like Yoko's playing in the background. Yeah, I hear it. I can hear it. I hear it. Oh no, no, not again. Oh no, not again. Sorry. Uh SoFi five fifty two, up six cents on your SoFi. Tesla up five eighty five. Apple up forty five. Unity up five. We're going green. We're going green. Uh, they're snapping in the dancing for GameStop. This stock is clearly going to moon tomorrow night for sure. Um, Holmes, Drew, yes, the QE experiment coming to an end. Brian, uh, you seem to have more energy, Bruce, now that you don't do the after show, afternoon shows anymore. I try the best I can. Try. I, one of the nice things I get to do is, is uh, I still go for a nap after these shows because I'm exhausted. I've been up since 3.30. It's now 7.30 in the morning, my time. Um, but I don't have to set an alarm. But it's not like I sleep any longer. Uh, I, I might only get a 30-minute nap in, 40 minutes, whatever. But without an alarm, there's no stress in my brain that the alarm's going to go on. It's no, there's no alarm. So that's kind of But today's a big day. We're taking Jen to uh, Eisenhower today. We're, we're looking at getting her knees uh, injected with some stuff uh we're gonna hope that all happens today we'll see what happens we'll work on that anyway thank you everybody for uh, the thumbs ups today 204 thank you and keep them coming on the rerun everybody keep your eye on the market i will too um don't be surprised if i crank a video out later i might do that uh, you just never know what i'm up to uh and then join me tomorrow morning uh let's get back at it tomorrow and let's see what this market does for us um could be a lots and lots of fun here. Thank you all. Uh, manager, I have not made any money today. Uh, <clears throat> all my shorts against me. All longs and covered calls are against me. Too much cheerleading going on. Where is Rugman anyway? Uh, home skillet. I want to see Uncle Bruce dance like that, like wearing that those McDaddy robes from Friday's clip. Oh, wow, yes, the, 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 uh, the outfit, baby, with the felt hat. Oh, yeah, man. Mm, good times. Good times. Good times, good times. 1688 on GameStop hit the hit hit a high there. Uh, 1696 has been the high today. 17 is in the future, perhaps. That could be good. Um, so far, 550 up three. Go so far, go so far. Oh, that would be good. All right, kids, I got to get going. Uh, thank you all for being here today. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you for the thumbs ups. Thank you for your support of being a, a member of this channel for as long as you have been members. You guys are awesome. Um, and uh, we'll keep an eye on this market together and uh, we'll, we'll catch you later on and uh, definitely see you tomorrow morning. First thing, make money, kids. Uh, they're handing it to you. Take, take it from the option players. All right, guys. Talk to you soon. Goodbye from Palm Desert.